Hello and welcome back to another Pinnacle Fantasy Preview. Uh, so today we're going to be looking at the HLTV Fantasy League and it's going to be focusing on Blast Premier Fall Final, um, which is quite a mouthful. And it's an event that will be looking at uh, giving a team a qualification spot into the Blast World Finals, which will be happening later next month. And it's got a significant prize pool of a million dollars. And Brandon, this is something that you looked at for this event and you were quite surprised by the, uh, by the amount of money going towards this yeah one. it's like a eight team event the the purse for the entire prize pool is four hundred twenty five thousand. First place just gets a casual 200k and then also the qualification just to come through to the world finals that, that's wild to me i mean that's exciting as it is um and with a lot of money on the line we're seeing a lot of kind of obviously blast the uh, asl they're kind of the front runners for Events we've just seen the Elisa Espoo that was like 100k for first place, which is really cool. So it's good to see we're getting like these blockbuster kind of prize pools because also what that does is it just means that it's a little bit more incentive for teams to play that a little bit better, right? I think it's nice as well because you look at some of these other esports titles, you know, League of Legends, mm -hmm. Dota, they're they're in the tens of millions for the first place prize pool uh, at these yeah. at these events. And I think with CS, because there's so many tournaments scattered throughout the year rather than these like two highlighted tournaments, it is quite nice now that they are rising up rather than just being like a, a yeah. 50k tournament. It's now you get these 200k tournaments with some lesser known teams involved. But, you know, it, it's quite nice because it gives, like I say, it gives them incentive to play and play at a level that's, that we want to see as well. Yeah, just... I mean, they should be playing at that level anyway. Yeah, uh, they, they should be. Uh... It's a nice little bonus, right, yeah. for them. I mean, the fact that you're just attending the event and you get 10k just for showing up, that's quite nice. Yeah, it's it's a it's a good bit of cash in their pocket, you know. Pays for the flights back home. Yeah, exactly that. But uh this event consists of two groups. Um the first group is FaZe, OG, Heroic, and Nip. So these are this is the first group we're gonna talk about. And it's it's uh it's played in a style where the top three teams from each group will qualify to a single elimination bracket. So out of those four teams. Who do you think initially is your that team's going home? That team's going home. Um, oh well, you're not gonna like me for this one. I think I think it's gonna be NIP. Um, luck, luckily, it's in Denmark, so they haven't got to go far. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> yeah, true. But um, look, I I don't want to say NIP because I actually like want that project to do well because I like the players in that team. The issue I've got with NIP is I feel like they've just changed too much too quickly, uh, and what I mean by that is I feel like. Alexi B coming in, you want to do a structural change. That's perfect. You want to bring him in as an IGL. That's cool. I don't mind that because Hampus was playing really well when he wasn't calling. So the fact that you bring him in, it's like, okay, that gives up Hampus a little bit more breathing room. He can kind of play his own game, focus on his crosshair and be that prolific rifle that he was when he first joined NIP. The issue you've got is then you you've changed an additional two components, which one's going to come inherently hand in hand with Alexi B with the fact that you now all speak English which is now a new dynamic. Obviously, you've got people in the team that have spoken English before. You've got S-Tag that was on the Cloud9 project. You've got Roland was on the Fnatic International project as well. And Alexi B has been doing IGL in G2 and OG for quite a while. So, I mean, that's interesting because you you actually look at the you look at the Blast teams that are turning up and a third of them are like Alexi B's teams. <laughs> um, he's got the insider uh, information. He's, he's ready. He does. Uh, I don't... I don't know if Rez has played on a EU team before, and I don't think Hampus has. But regardless, that comes hand in hand. That's already a difficult thing to navigate because now you're changing the entirety of what you call, how you call things, and the different grammar and like the shorter sentences you'll probably be using now communicating in your second language. Uh, and then adding Rez uh, as the AWP to that. What I would have liked to have seen personally is if they just kept Astag on the AWP just for a little bit, because I'm sure he wouldn't have minded um because he's second orbs anyway yeah and then you, you kind of let him be you let alexi take over the structure of the team and then you can just reevaluate it in a couple of months if res really wants to orb you can put him on the orb in a couple of months get that structure set because then you've got your foundations i feel like they've tried to build the house too quickly and it's just kind of collapsed and whilst it was a honeymoon period and the rmr you have a look at how they performed at the major they didn't perform very well yeah i think words were said like they they didn't even feel like they were in the server. Yeah. But for for me, the issue comes with I mean, there's all this talk about res on the orb. And I think in a in an interview for HTV Confirmed, Hampus and DJL both said that Res is one of the most mechanically gifted players they've seen and probably the best uh, mechanical player in Sweden. Mm. Which 
is fine if he can keep the consistency up. Yeah. But, then, but it also becomes a question of, does he want to warp? Because I, I don't feel like he's been forced onto the warp by the organization. But I don't, I don't know if he's... It's one of those things, isn't it? If you, if you really, if you don't want to, if you're not going ahead and asking, can I do this? Can I take this role up? There's always going to be that concern and, and and a bit of deliberation behind it of, am I really cut out for this role? Do I want to be doing this role? And it, it's one of those, is, is he going to be completely comfortable going in? And you look at him, I mean, the first game you, he's playing against, he's going against Cadian, who is in insane form right now. Does he have that up to scratch? Because it's one thing being a CT orper, but does he have that movement? And that was something I saw a lot talked about, the movement as a T-side Orpa. It's, that's yeah. the concern. I think also you've got to take into account his role on the team. I mean, like, Orpas, they can either create space for you by going for entries, or you can let your entry frags surely dictate that, and your responsibility will be just holding a hard line. I feel like if he's holding a hard line, he'll be fine. It's like, similar to, like, Eta Tag Orpin. It's like, if you get him on an angle, he'll be fine. But if it's those... If he is mecha he is mechanically gifted, like I'm not taking that away from yeah. him, but it's those split decisions where you have to kind of decide what you're doing. It does change from when you're being an orper to when you're being a rifler. So I feel like it's a, it's an interesting debate. I feel like that. I what I will say is after the major, they would have been upset with their performance. They would have gone away and they would have worked really hard on it. Whether I think that's going to be up to scratch and then going in against the runners up in your first match of the major. Uh, which I'll be honest with you, they should have won that major. Yeah. Um, it was just they didn't show up. And outside, I tell you what, outsiders played a brilliant game. Off topic, they played an absolutely impeccable game. I will not take away that victory from them. They thoroughly did deserve to win, but I thought heroic was going to win. I even said it on one of these previous podcasts. Yeah. yeah. Um, but you go up against them. That's that's already difficult. You then look at the other side of the bracket. You go into a game with OG, and I feel like OG are actually kind of on a little bit of an upward trajectory. Um, if we look over at that matchup, but to speak more about Heroic, I feel like they are a team that's ahead of the development curve. Um, that's Cadian's words as well. And utilizing Yabby, I feel like Yabby actually played really well at the major. They were putting him in a lot of positions where he could really shine, and they were setting him up for success. And you've got really underrated, not underrated, understated players such as Shush, who just sit in these anchor roles, who are always good for multi kills. And the fact that you've got Stown not really showing up until right at the very end is actually a very promising sign for Heroic because it means that everything's a lot more consistent. You're not just relying on Stan, which was never the original intention anyway. Yeah, I, I think with Heroic, the Major really showed what they can do as, as a five-man unit. I think Shush had been... I, I don't know if underperforming is the correct word to use for it, but he hadn't been you know playing to the, the level he played at the Major. He played exceptionally yeah. well at the Major. And Yabby hadn't been putting up numbers that they were expecting from him after his performance in Copenhagen Flames. And again, he came into the bay chat and he looked fantastic. So if they're going to continue that form on until the end of the year at these two blast events, if they qualify for the next you know, world's finals, which yeah. uh, you know they're probably as a, a favorite to do so at the minute, um, I, I think they are really a contender, you know, as one of the top teams currently. And when we talk about the the pieces, they've been together for far much longer than than yeah. the NIP boys have, and especially under a leadership angle. You know, Alexi B, as you say, has just come in and he's a new structure, English for Hampus and um, and Rez. And it was something the DJL was saying as a coach he was struggling with. You know, sometimes he just yeah. he needed to prepare a few rounds before to actually get out what he needed to say in English in, in, in those timeouts. That, to me, is that's a real concern. And I'm glad if they don't qualify to the world final, I am glad that they have this time that they need so they can get prepared for Katowice because they need that. There is no way this this squad is going to work without time. Yeah, no, I completely agree. And it's one of those, it's a really nice case study because what I feel NIP as an organization do really well is they give time to their players. Yeah. I mean, you've got obviously that whole device situation, but what they did more importantly is they said, look, health comes first. We will prioritize that over you. Make, as in like, make sure that you have that like locked in and get back to us. But he was, he was on the bench, but look, he regardless of whatever happened, because I don't really know what happened behind yeah. the scenes, to be honest, but regardless, they put him first, and they are they are, a they are an organization that will only make roster changes if it makes sense, and they, they feel like, I feel like they think this roster is a long-term project to compete. You wouldn't just change to English and expect immediate results. However, it's interesting that you compare them to Heroics. Obviously, they're playing them. We've been together for such a long time, because I feel like the 
biggest thing that will come into this best of three is trust. And you've got a very similar map pool. You've got Cadian. If he's on the server and he's just calling the way he kind of like dials in sometimes to the server, they will just go with whatever. They trust the entire process in that. And I think that's a very scary thing to go up against if you're a, a new team. But what it will do is it will teach NIP a lot. Yeah. I think this is definitely a good event, especially because they've got uh, the harder group, in my opinion. If they have to go up against yeah, an OG right. or a phase in the lower bracket, that's fantastic for them. As as in terms of um, experience, so you're saying, yeah, that is fantastic for them. I don't think they're expecting to do much at this event. I mean, there's no, there's not really a chance they qualify for the world finals. Looking at the leaderboard, unless they win, and realistically. Even as an NIP fan and someone who is completely delusional when it comes to them, I can say that I don't see them doing that unless they do the same that they did at the RMR when, you know, they, they took teams like Cloud9 close and beat them. But I don't know if it's going to happen again. I, I just feel like they need more time. And they like, like you're saying, the, the trust behind that IGL is something that's going to come with time. And okay. Alexi B can build that up. We, we've seen it happen. He, he can do that. And on the other side of this, uh, you've got FaZe and OG. So you've got the other team that went 0-3 in the Legend stage. Are we concerned about FaZe? I I don't think so. I, I feel like a lot of people kind of saw the immediate results. And they were like, oh my God. <laughs> uh, I, saw pe I saw people on social media saying the roster changes. I, mm -hmm. I the, the classic rain out or uh, what's oh, going to happen? Oh. Carrigan's going to get subbed out again. No, people, people, people want a Brokey's head. I saw, I saw Brokey? Minus bro I saw Minus Brokey uh, quite a few times. And I was like, how? Like, what, what is going Brokey's on? Brokey has been one of the most consistent yeah. players this year. The whole roster's been consistent. Yeah. Apart from, apart from the major, look, look at what they've accomplished. I think it's the first team to go on a run where they win, what, Katowice, Cologne, like the major, yeah. like, everything else like they're, they're playing incredibly well and you're allowed to have an off event like it didn't go well the reason why it didn't go well is part in part because carrigan was saying in his exit interview that they wanted to play seven maps because they want to be a little bit more dynamic because they felt like they need to show even more uh, at this major they pick i feel like that veto was a mistake against bad news eagles i feel like that you just pick ancient because you've got your best your best cave player in the world in rain just Put him there. Like he, they would have won that. They destroyed them on Mirage. And yeah, it was interesting. Regardless, like, that's in the past. I feel like FaZe, they'll come out of the event. I think like they're, they're gonna have a point to prove. They're gonna have a chip on their shoulder after this. And it's like they've lost their world number one ranking now and they've got to earn it back. And they still won event off the grand slam in terms of like the Intel stuff. And if they can cap the year off with they're already qualified to this, but yeah. If they can just do well at this, it's a good show. It's a nice little warm up for those um, world finals. Like, I feel like they'll be fine. <clears throat> yeah, I, I agree. I think I don't think there's any real concern around. I know they've had a a poorer end of the year than they did the start of the year, but I mean, how can you top the start of the year that they had, other than okay. by winning absolutely everything in the latter half? Like, it's incredible what they achieved in the first half of the year, and I feel like because they went o three at the major. People are forgetting slightly what they've accomplished and how good some of yeah. their players are. Like Twist is the best Canadian player and one of the best players for me, certainly in the top 10 uh, for this year. And yeah. the same for, for Brokey. And Rain has been consistent, which has surprised me. I was one of those people that was always a bit like, is Rain good enough for this roster? And this year, especially, he's shown how good he is, especially as an entry fragger. It's incredible what what this roster has been able to achieve with, I mean, such such little change in their their real system. I mean, just keeping Carrigan and Rain as a two as like, you know, like duo. I mean, I've been impressed with them, and I think OG the last time they played them, I think was at a blast event, and I'm fairly sure they lost two zero. This was a while ago now. Um, I I can't remember that. And I, mean, I I think you were I think you were um. Uh, what's the the event called? One of the UK events you were at with the bin men. Oh, okay, yeah. Oh, uh, yeah, insomnia. Insomnia. I think you were in you were at insomnia that week. Uh, that was being played out, and yeah, I think OG had an exceptional event. It was when they just picked up Dexter. Yeah. So OG won. OG won that series two one. Two one. Okay, two one. So they. I, I mean, I I still think Phase take that initial matchup, um, but I do think OG have been looking very good. I think they. 
the the uh, challenger stage that they had, I think, was a bit unfortunate. I think they came up against some yeah. teams that were, you know, on their level. Maybe pressure got to them. I'll be honest, they should have won that Vitality game. That should have been 2-0. Yeah, I agree. All, the, all, all that happened there was um, a little bit of sloppy rounds, a little bit of carelessness. It goes into overtime, and that's when the experience shows. Magis gets, like, back-to-back 3K, 4Ks. Unbelievable. But I feel like reflecting on the Major, taking a look at it for OG, I feel like that, that was a really good positive step in their development. I What I was impressed with is I was impressed at how well Neofrag was performing, because... Yep. He was exceptional when he was on Sinners. He gets picked up for OG. Everyone's like, this is really exciting. This is going to be great. And then it takes a while. There is a transition period to adjust from Tier 2 CS, where you're playing day in, day out. You're getting the reps. You're doing so much. And then you kind of go into Tier 1. Yeah, the calendar's still hectic, but you're not playing every single event. You're not playing day in, day out. You're not you're not playing these qualifiers for the tournaments because sometimes you're a direct invite. There is a real transition period there. Same with BQ, who was on um, AGO. I feel like that there's um, a lot of a lot of positives that OG can take away from this. And obviously that having Dexter as well is just a big plus. Yeah. I feel like um, people were quick to jump on um, the Flames bandwagon as well, and they were saying that he wasn't performing great. Ever since uh, Neo Frag and Fiku have come in, his roles have changed. Yep. So he's not being that star player anymore because he's not being put in those positions because he had to move to accommodate to allow Neo Frag some of his roles. Um, so, yeah, impressed with them. I feel like Nexa, I, that I look at them and they, they remind me a lot of Ents and what they're doing in their organization. So I'm excited um, for OG. I'm a big, um, I'm a big OG fan. So. Uh, I'm excited to see what they've got to bring. Do I think they'll make it far in this event? It's difficult to say. I feel like if they start off warm, they could go on a little bit of a run. Like, I believe that they've got it. They'll, they'll go competitive against FaZe. I feel like if they get blown out against FaZe, and that lower final will obviously be incredibly difficult for them. However, I feel like they can make it competitive. They show that they can do it against Vitality, and they've already beaten FaZe before. Why not do it again? Yeah, I, I definitely think that if if they do get blown out against FaZe, and it is an IP we see in the lower bracket. This being in Denmark, the crowd is going to be behind an IP, <laughs> no matter how badly they they may have performed at the major. So that's again, it's it's a difficult match, and I think that's something that we may see OG struggle with if the crowd just isn't behind them. It's a tough team for them to get behind as well because I think a lot of their team, uh, like the nations that their players are from, they're not really a particularly um, you know, it's like supported region in terms of where events are held. I think yeah. mainly it's it's Katowice for Fiku, right? It's Polish. Yeah, I'd say so. Yeah. It's so, so it's it is kind of tough for people to get behind that squad. But just on the topic of people coming up from tier two, I think it's been an incredible year for players like that. You know, you have the likes of you know Neofrag, Fiku. You had Fame and Norbert, who looks exceptional. And I mean, if you even go as far, you know, Monazi come out from the academy scene and what's happening with Mal Sports right now. Yeah. These academy players, these tier two players that have been rising up. It's been a great year for that and seeing the development that some of these teams have had. And just, you know, on, on the topic of, of Monazi, he's playing in Group B, which features Na'Vi, Fluxo, and Liquid also. And do we yeah. think that Liquid G2 game is going to be as close as I personally think that it's going to be? Oh, I think it's going to be entertaining. Um, look, I feel, I feel like... Liquid, they choked in the legend stage against Spirit. Spirit played an incredible game. Um, I felt like there were opportunities that Liquid could have capitalized upon and they didn't. Uh, it felt a little bit rough. Nitro for me is not the best candidate, but at the same time, you want an American IGL. Like, do you, do you think yeah. uh, because when when Liquid were on top, I say on top, I mean, Astralis still you know shattered yeah. them. Nitro was on the alt pro and IGLing. Do you think that because of that switch now where they have an actual AWPer, that that's what is, is causing his kind of lack of performance? Because it's it's not no, a surprise to I, anyone. He's not been performing I, very well. I don't think so. I think it's that year break he had in Valorant and or well, like nearly two years. And then he's come back and he's immediately been thrown into a tier one team. And then the expectation is you've been thrown into a tier one team. We expect you to perform incredibly well at every single tournament. Uh, they have they then transitioned away from kind of their style of play to incorporate Ikindar, and Ikindar's brought a lot of ideas, and that's now being incorporated more into the liquid structure. 
which I feel like would have a little bit of an impact into Nitro's calling because he's suddenly have to learn two different things. He wants to catch up with the meta. He's also, as you said, got to learn to become a little bit of a rifler, a little bit of like of a almost an anchor player in some of these bomb sites. A on ancient, especially that's kind of where he was getting picked apart. Yeah. But um, I mean, it's something he did previously as a rifler. He he came up in the scene as a as a rifler, yeah. um, which is why it's so bizarre the, the amount of like role shifts this guy had, but. Um, something else that I noticed at the Major was in that last map against Spirit, and it may have been in other maps, but when they called timeouts, Apps was silent. <laughs> it was your kinder doing all the talking. And I think that's got to be, even even if Apps is there as a technical uh, and a tactical mind behind it, he's coming up with your strats and he's, you know, he's really helping with that. Do you think that they're missing something there? Because you see a lot of these coaches and how vocal they are in these timeouts. I mean, you look at Gobby. Gobby's a prime example of someone who is yeah. so vocal. Do you think by having, and th again, this might have just been in this one map, but it seemed that Yakinda was doing most of the talking during the time. Do you think they're losing something there? Oh, I think I think that was just kind of a, a one-off thing, and I think it was. I think I I don't actually mind it because he's just kind of letting his players have um, thirty seconds to kind of be emotive, get it out of their system, and then encourage and rally around each other if he's got anything critical he wants to say i reckon he would take the point but if he didn't if he didn't have anything constructive to say and he wanted the team to figure it out almost like on their own if he wanted them when i say that i mean like support wise i imagine it's a very it's a very emotional time you're fighting for your legend stage on the line you you come back after going a map down you then level it out it looks pretty good um, and then it's a close affair and it's a, a couple of rounds that are a little bit scrappy that go here or there there's a couple of uh, decisions you get lost in the moment sometimes and i feel like daps didn't want to take away too much is, is what is what i feel and... do you feel like that's something because he's been in that position like exactly. and not necessarily in the yeah. legends but as a player yeah and i feel like um like he he respects them they respect him because he, he does do he does do a lot of talking and he is a very analytical guy so um i won't worry about that too much so i think how how long before stanislaw replaces him I, I, don't know. I, I don't know. I don't. I don't want to. That's a, it's, a, it's a funny meme, but at the same time, like, oh, <laughs> it's, it's, it's concern. It could happen. Uh, we hope I mean, not. Who knows in this timeline, honestly? But no, uh, they they're fine. I feel like I I like watching them as a team. I think that they're very interesting to watch. I feel like that they've got a lot of good pieces. I feel like OC is a very competent author. I feel like Elige um is obviously a very mechanically gifted rifler. Oh, the pieces are there. They just need to yeah. click together a little bit more. Um, same could be said with G2. Literally, literally exactly. same case, right? It's um, That's where these parallels can be drawn from. I feel like, look, the benefits you got for Hooksy is that he's unlocked Manasi a lot more. I feel like he's he's put in Manasi similarly to how he had Nikodos and Copenhagen Flames. That's exciting to watch. Hunter feels like a lot more like kind of off the leash a little bit because JKS is taking some of those supportive roles. It's Again, that's a good team on paper. It's just whether they can mesh and just kind of get it over the line. Uh, yeah. There's some external issues that happened in G2. They're a little bit crazy uh, during that time as well. don't know how much that affected them. But also, you kind of got to consider the fact that Hooksy was really not fragging. Uh, and you talk, we talked about these tier two guys stepping up. You can push the envelope and say that Copenhagen Flames is similarly to a team spirit where they would make very good major runs, but outside of the competition, they weren't getting these tier one invites. It was always tier two events that they were thriving in. And again, the step up is quite a lot, um, especially as an IGL that wasn't really uh, delivering too much on the kill front in tier two. You don't yeah. expect him to do well in tier one. Especially going to um, speak a different language entirely as well. Exactly it's it's a very tough switch. It is. Uh, and yeah, and this roster needs time. And it's having time now. How much more time does it need? I feel like it needs a few more months. Um, That's but... always the thing with G2, isn't it? It's how much time are they going to allow their players before the yes. switch comes in? But um, look, I feel like this best of three is cool. I think it'll be a. I think it'll be the most interesting opener to watch out of all of them. I feel like it'll be the most entertaining. There'll be mistakes, but there'll be good Counter Strike thrown in as well. It'll be a perfect blend of chaos, and I'm excited for it. Who do I think will win? Uh, G2. I feel like G2 will actually uh, get it over Liquid. <laughs> I, I'm i going to agree with you, even though I don't want to. 
Um, <laughs> it's it's a tough one for me with G two because I like yeah. I I think both of their teams are very similar in you know the, where they stand currently. Um, like you're saying, how they're trying to build up the, these mm. these systems, and it seems to be when they come to these events, you always have that one player that doesn't quite perform that you need to perform. At Pro League, OC was getting a lot of flack. And I think uh, for, for Liquid, Hunter wasn't doing too great at one of the events recently. And it's just always a case, really, where, you know, you'll have these players completely pop off. And Nico came back into the form at the RMR. Unfortunately, they didn't make it through. But I feel like with, with Liquid and G2, they're both kind of similar in that way, especially with the yeah, IGL they fronts where they don't really, you know, have fragging IGLs. So maybe it is just which IGL frags better, and that I mean, could be what pushes them over the line. It's also a case of these teams both choke quite a lot of games. It's yep. also the case of these two teams have been hurt by fans, but they'll still trust them anyway. Uh, so I've been I've been hurt by both Liquid and G2 in the past. Um, but I, I, I feel like on paper, G2 have just got the better roster. Um, yep. And I feel like that RMR result would have been so crushing to them that they, yeah. would, they would have had to have gone away and really worked things out um i think they changed their coach as well um so yeah, yes they Swanee did yeah now so that that'll be interesting to see how that goes um with x taz something that's also but... interesting and might not have that much of an effect but just just a point to consider dust 2 has recently been taken out of the map pool and they're both teams that play dust 2 yeah but they are playing on the old patch it's they they, they th that's my my, my point being that there's not going to be many teams that we're going to look to play Dust 2 other than the teams at this event. So yeah, in terms of practice agree. leading into this, does that have any effect really? I mean, for, for me personally, I don't think it has that much of an effect. No, it won't. But it won't. it's I just mean, an no. interesting thing to look at. Like, Yeah, I mean, FaZe played Dust 2, Na'Vi played Dust yeah. 2, OG played Dust 2, uh, Fluxo loved Dust 2. I know that's not really relevant. But so it's really Fluxo. like, well, NIP? I don't Probably really not. like, I think that's it. <laughs> It's, yeah, it's it'd be interesting um i think it's like it, it, it's one of those things isn't it where if you want to play dust 2 you're having to really scrim against the teams mm -hmm. that are already at the event so are you giving anything away probably not at this point because i mean the map's ending yeah yeah do you, do you just I throw mean, in all your save your save strats have to, yeah just, dust 2's here interesting um i feel like again i've really just tangented your entire podcast uh but <laughs> we haven't talked about navi flux though no uh, navi flux so that was going to be interesting uh navi should beat flux so but don't write flux so off all right you're like, a big flux so supporter i'm not a big flux okay supporter, okay but I, think, I think that they are they go under the radar a lot like they made it through the show down north america they took down some very good teams they beat like mibr uh zero the nation complexity bombed out of that event eg bombed out of that event as well uh, the journey they got, they actually beat EG uh, in three maps. That was on Dust Two as well. Fun fact. Um, <laughs> and yeah, I, I, I think, I think for me, Fluxo is a cool team. They again, it's it's one of those where they don't get many invites and they battled their way all the way through to get here uh, through the showdowns. I think Lukowski is a very good signing um, from Sharks. He's very good, uh, completely. I feel like the the one thing for Fluxo, a very big win factor for this team. Um, is that Phelps kind of goes absent in some of the games. Like sometimes he will play incredibly well and in other games will drop like four kills and it'll be like double overtime. You're like, oh. Do you, I mean, for, for many people who are unaware of Fluxor, um, I mean, oh, you, may, point, you may, you yeah. may, you may recognize <laughs> names like Phelps or, or Woody or VSM. VSM. They're probably yeah. the, the names that you may know um, from, you know, MIBR rosters or, yeah, just other Brazilian teams because that that whole scene is just getting mixed and matched all over the place all the time. Um, yeah, I I mean I'm not that familiar with Fluxo. Uh, I'm familiar with some of the players, but I mean the the question really is if if they lose to Navi, which they're expected to, do yeah. you think that they do have a chance in a best of three against Liquid or a G two? Depends on the veto. Honestly, depends on the veto. Okay. Um, because they're a team that will actively play Dust Two, um, so I think that that's that's good for them. I feel like they'll also play they play Vertigo and I think they play Nuke. 
So they're quite a tricky team. Um, oh, they also like ancient. Okay. So they play like all the weird maps. Yeah. Um, which which is fun. <laughs> yeah, yeah, it's nice um, to watch them. Uh, so I, I feel like like if they play Liquid and an Ancient, I think they'll win. Um, okay. If they play G two on Dust two, I don't think they'll win. Uh, but so so you yeah, think look, it, we'll, it might at least be a close series against it will, the, the series the series that Fluxo play, not the one against Navi, but in that losers bracket, it should be close. Okay, I I, I like that. I think they they're definitely going to be exciting to watch, and you'd hope that there's not another upset for G two or Liquid. They have had a lot of ups and downs this year. No, this event needs to go by the book for most of the teams attending the event. Yes, I think the problem for Liquid and G2 is that, I mean, they, they all have the, so Navi, Liquid and G2 all have the chance to make it into the single elimination bracket. Yeah. But how much further do they go from there? And um, We're not going to go too far into that because we don't know what teams will make it through and the way it's yeah, laid out is a nice. bit a bit tough. But I think we've covered pretty much all the teams now. Um do you have a favorite for this event? And then we'll look at our team. Um, I think it's very difficult to call. Heroic, probably. Okay. Because obviously they need they need to kind of win this to qualify as well. So I'd like I'd back a heroic. I'd actually, do you know what? I'd back an underdog like a Liquid or G two, to be honest. Yeah, I I'm, I'm quite they, favoring they one of them. They they, they do something special. Heroic. Blast. <clears throat> Yeah, I don't know what it is. Yeah, G two especially. So yeah. we'll see. I don't know. I don't want to make any wild claims. I keep doing that on the podcast. <laughs> um, I'm, I'm kind of just we're near the end of the year now. I kind of want to chill. Well, so. I think NIP are gonna win. So if you want a wild claim, no, I'm kidding. I'm kidding. I'm not even that delusional. It's fine. I I, I definitely agree. A liquid or G two could yeah, take they it. Might, they might win a map. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> <laughs> if they win a map, I'll be happy. The jersey will come on and I'll celebrate all night long. But we'll we'll see what happens. Um, just do, before we do move on, uh, the way that the world final works is a leaderboard. So it will be teams that have won either blast events or um, outsiders recently qualified because they won the major. So the four teams currently qualified here are Phase, Navi, uh, Outsiders, and Vitality. So that's why yeah. you're not seeing Vitality yet. They're not like this. Um, which means if they win, I mean, there isn't that much incentive for them to win this event. That is the other thing we need to look at. But for these other teams, NIP pretty much need to win this event to qualify for that. Liquid and G2, I think, are fairly close to qualified or will have qualified. I think G2 are tied for, with Heroic currently to qualify. So it's really riding on Liquid doing well because I don't think even if Nip get like a second or a third, they might not even make it. So it's really Liquid that we're looking at to do well at this event. And I mean, NIP need to win. So that's that's really the stakes here. There's not that much for FaZe or Na'Vi. So as much as we'd like them to do well and we need them to do well to so people can have their you know the backing of them again yeah it doesn't really matter like no, realistically they'll just, they'll just be looking to not yeah be good at that. like if, if it comes down to a situation of who wants it more i don't know if they really are gonna matter that much they they don't need the money let's be real phase <laughs> phase are on the road for a grand slam they, they don't need the money for this so Take it to world final. Show what you got there against some of the best teams in the world. I mean, there already are some of the best teams in the world here, but the best in the world is what the world final was meant to be. So yeah, as long as they, they shouldn't bomb out. I feel like yeah, that's the, definitely not. The, underli the, un the underlying stories is teams want to play well, obviously, yeah. uh, but going by the book, there, there shouldn't be any. There, there's a hope that there's no upsets, and um, obviously, Phase Navi obviously always contenders to do yeah. well at these events, but. The likes of heroic playing well, the likes of qualification lives on the line for some of these events. It could push the teams that are kind of on the uh, edge and the threshold up above one of these other teams. Yeah, I think emotions are going to be running high for Liquid and and Nip if they really do want that spot. Um, but if you're a fan of Phase or Navi, don't be disheartened if they don't do well at this event. They're already through. You'll get to see them again in December. Uh, so that's my yeah. take on that. So we built a fantasy team. And uh, there wasn't actually that much debate. I think I, I was, I was quite happy to just say NIP, fine, we won't pick them. Um, so our team, as you see on the screen, uh, will be uh, Perfecto, and as our Navi yep. player, and then we've got two from G two and two from Phase. So Twists, Carrigan, and Monazi and Hunter. So for me particularly, I think Perfecto for the price is great, one nine nine. 
I think he's a solid player. Navi are probably going to do well. And Monazi was someone that you were quite happy and, and wanting to take. So, Brandon, why why did you think Monazi was a good pick? Uh, just kind of like circling back to some of the points we were saying about G2. Um, kind of what's on the line for G2. After a poor performance at the RMR, they're going to have a very good event here because it's the first event since that for them. Um, and Monazi is always playing incredibly well. And I like the way that Hooks has been utilizing in, in his system. So I feel like Manasi could be very unlocked here, and I'm excited. There's a lot of hype around this kid for good reason. So, yeah. Yeah, I want to see him. I'm glad we got him. I think as well, when you look at Twists and Carrigan, I think Carrigan's going to have a lot to... Oh, that he wants to prove himself. He took a lot of the yeah. responsibility for that loss against Bad News Eagles. I think he's going to want to want to prove a lot. So wins are going to be perfect for him here with the IGL role. He's also 175, so you know we can get some really nice players in like Monazi. And Twists, for me, um, I've always been a big Twist fanboy since he was in Liquid. And I think, in my opinion, he has probably been the most impactful player on that phase lineup and probably the most consistent. Uh, I mean, Brokey's probably there alongside him. But I think Twist is always a solid choice when you need a phase player. I, I think Rops is sometimes, you know, you can get a little bit of a dip in performance from Rops. But I think with Twists, you're pretty much guaranteed points. Yeah, agreed. And Hunter, I think, is in a similar position. He's someone on this G2 lineup that sometimes can go a bit overlooked. You've got so much talent on that lineup. You know, Mona Z, Nico. I mean, JKS hasn't really stepped up in any way that's been, you know, like outstanding and, and people have been screaming about like he did in Renegades or even 100 Thieves. So, but, but I think Hunter is one of those players that can be overlooked. And it, although there is the joke of he's Nico's cousin, sometimes. You know, you need to see that performance, and you do see that performance when you go, oh, well, Nico's Hunter's cousin. So if we can get that from him, he's guaranteed lots of points. I mean, he was 201,000, which again is a solid price. I think he's going to do very well for G2. And if G2 do get wins like we think they might, I mean, it's a solid roster. Yeah. Was there I mean, anybody it's... that you like yeah. may maybe would have liked um, that we couldn't afford well, we, here? We kind of played the uh, percentages, didn't we? We said, yes. okay, who would. Who would come in here? I feel like two talking points uh, would have been cool to get a heroic player in here, but at the same time, like realistically, who do you drop? I mean, maybe maybe Hunter, but then you we we're, were playing around the prices. It's it's, it's tough because all their prices have gone up significantly with the second place at the major. Yeah, um, so. but originally, like I said, shoot, let's put Yabby in there because um, I'm a big Yabby fan, uh, or even a Shush for the anchor yes. role. I thought that'd be quite good. Um, and then, so that that's one talking point. And then I wanted Lakowski because I think he's a gamer. But <laughs> the, the the issue is is that Flux are realistically are not going to get that far. So yep. He's not going to get too many points. But um, shout out Lakowski, big fan. I think if NIP had done slightly better at the major, I think Hampus was one hundred ninety three thousand, which in yeah. my opinion for Han uh, for Hampus is a solid solid price. But if Nip aren't going to do well, there's no point putting someone in who's only going to play like two matches. Yeah, it, exactly. That. It's it's yeah, it's it's a with this thing you've always got to kind of play around the system and the blast system is quite short and especially at this event and I think this format plays the same at the world final which is slightly concerning for me considering the amount of money on the line um in that few games but I don't know we'll see what happens there. I'm happy with this team. I I really like this team. I think we got four players that are going to perform well statistically and I think Carrigan is a solid choice for someone who is going to give us points especially with the boosters we got applied yeah uh, i'm quite happy with it i don't know what i'm doing anyway <laughs> so i kind of let you direct i tried to throw a little bit of chaos in but it makes sense. <laughs> yeah you definitely threw some chaos in uh but this has been our fantasy team it's been our preview of the event we'd like to know you know who you think is going to do well do you think nip are going to bomb out do you think the liquid g2 match is going to be as close as we we think it might be and if you'd like to join our, our league then there'll be a link in the description and come play along with us